Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explained. So obviously we've had a lot of exciting announcements from Apple and Qualcomm in terms of uh, ARM instruction set CPUs that are going to be used in laptops and in desktops. So in this video I want to look at the history, the features and the software compatibility for the M3 and the Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite and do a comparison of them. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now, before we dive in, I just want to point out this is not the video where I'm comparing the performance of these two chips. That's coming in a few days' time. This is, as I said, about the features and the history and the software, how we got to this moment where there are now laptops and desktops using the ARM architecture rather than the x86 architecture. Okay, so we're going to be looking at the Apple M3 versus the new Snapdragon X elite and as i said this is the history the features and the software the performance aspect will come in a future video so qualcomm versus apple this is what we're doing the two companies that are making uh, these chips who is qualcomm qualcomm quality communications is an american multinational headquartered in san diego specializes in semiconductors software and services for wireless technology and it holds key patents for 5g 4g and other mobile standards it was founded in 1985 by erwin jacobs and some others Qualcomm initially started as a contract and research center and it did research into CDMA. Later, CDMA became the North American 2G standard incorporating Qualcomm's patents. Over time, Qualcomm has grown to sell semiconductor products using a fabulous model. That means it doesn't own a production plant. It uses companies like TSMC or Samsung to make its chips. Uh, and it develops components and software for a range of devices, including those in vehicles, watches and smartphones. And of course, it's best known for its Snapdragon mobile processors used by leading Android smartphone manufacturers. In October of 2023, so very recently, Qualcomm launched its first custom-designed laptop processor, the Snapdragon X Elite. Well, I hope you know who uh, Apple is. Of course, it's an American multinational company headquarters in California, and it is the largest company in the world by market capitalization as of March 2023. It kind of just time that it goes between one and two, and it's one of the top technology companies by revenue. Uh, among the big five American IT companies, Apple ranks as the fourth largest PC vendor and the largest manufacturer by revenue and the second largest mobile phone maker. It was founded in 1976 by Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs. There was a third guy who was there for like 12 days or something and gained fame with its Apple I and Apple II computers and, of course, the Macintosh range in 1984. And lots have been written, of course, about Apple and about Steve Jobs uh, and so on. Now, we know that Steve Jobs left the company in uh, the 90s and then in 1997, the company was near bankruptcy. Apple acquired Next, also bringing back Steve Jobs, who reinvented the companies with products that we still use and know today the iMac the iPod maybe not so much but the iPhone uh, and the iPad after Steve's resignation in 2011 and of course subsequent sad death Tim Cook became the CEO Apple achieved trillion dollar valuations in 2018 2020 2022 reaching over three trillion in the June of 2023 so it's big in November of 2020, Apple launched the M1, its first custom-designed laptop processor under the banner of Apple Silicon. Of course, it had been designing custom iPhone processors before that. So let's just look at uh, Apple's range, then we'll go back again to Qualcomm. So we're looking now at the M3 family. It's a series of ARM-based system-on-a-chips designed by Apple. The M3 processor includes a central processing unit and a graphics processing GPU, and they are used in Apple's iMac desktops and its uh, MacBook range of laptops. And there are a few iPads as well, which got M processors in them, but not M3 at the moment. The M3 specifically is a third generation of Apple's uh, ARM architecture of processors uh, when the company switched away from Intel processors to using Apple Silicon. Of course, the M3 is a successor to the M2. The M2 was a successor to the M1, which was that processor that was launched in uh, 2020, as I mentioned a moment. To go. Here's what they look like in the die shots. So basically, Apple have a range. There could even be a fourth one, the M3 Ultra, which we don't know about yet, but they basically grow in size, grow in the number of CPU cores, grow in the number of GPU cores, grow in the amount of uh, uh, transistors because they just get bigger and bigger. But essentially, they're the same chip, just scaled up depending on the particular application you want to use it. 
low end, mid end, high end, depending on how much CPU and GPU power you need. So they are in different configurations, as I said. So the standard M3 is an octa-core processor with four performance cores and four efficiency cores, and then an eight and a 10-core GPU. The Pro, next one up, you have to go up to 11 or 12 CPU cores, or 14 or 18 GPU cores. And then the Max, you go to 14 or 16 CPU cores and 30 or 40 uh, GPU cores, each with a different combination of performance and efficiency cores. So there's a range, whereas the Snapdragon X Elite at the moment is just one processor, which we will touch on in a moment. Now Qualcomm has been in the laptop processor market since 2018. All of its laptop processors carry the Snapdragon brand, so it's Snapdragon, the same branding as you get inside of smartphones, it's its processor brand. Uh, however, to set them apart, they are termed compute processors. So in contrast, there are mobile processors used in smartphones. So these are the compute processors. For instance, the official title of the Snapdragon 8CX Gen 3 is actually the Snapdragon 8 CX Gen 3 compute platform with the C in the name emphasizing its compute focus and so not to get confused with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 which is a smartphone processor. Previously uh, Qualcomm's compute processors were essentially modified versions of its mobile counterparts but tailored for laptops. They share the same CPU cores as the mobile versions however this changed with the introduction of the Snapdragon X a direct result of the uh, purchase of Nuvia. So this is a whole new processor designed by uh, designed by Qualcomm. And I've got lots of videos here on this channel about the initial purchase of Nuvia and the, what happened and, and how it going on and the lawsuits and who's involved. And they've got loads of stuff here on this channel. Uh, if, if you don't know all the whole story, then I will leave links to those in the description below. So here is how the uh, Snapdragon X Elite looks. It's a four nanometer processor. Just note, by the way, that the Apple is a three nanometer. So uh, it's quite interesting that Qualcomm are managing to get the levels of performance and efficiency that they are claiming using four nanometer, whereas Apple are now on three nanometer. And it offers 12 high performance cores. No efficiency cores, just high performance cores. And there's no uh, X Elite Pro or X Elite Max. This is what you get at the moment, 12 cores. They're just one model. So what I mean by custom CPU using the ARM instruction set, there are two types of CPU cores that use the ARM instruction set. There are CPU cores designed by ARM itself. ARM has microcontroller cores, that's the Cortex-M range, mobile cores, that's the Cortex-X range, the Cortex-A range, and server cores like the Neoverse N and the Neoverse V. Now, CPU cores are, can be designed by other companies, and these companies have what's called an architectural license with ARM. Any CPU core design needs to be certified and must be 100% compatible with the ARM instruction set architecture. Now, Apple and Qualcomm both have architectural license. I still read comments where people say, but isn't the Apple or isn't the Qualcomm using the Cortex X and then they're just tweaking it? No, Apple and Qualcomm in this case have designed their own custom 100% compatible ARM instruction set based processors. Now, over the years, the ARM ISA, that's the instructions that architecture has matured and developed. Like x86, there, it was 32 bits, then it moved to 64 bit. The versions uh, of the ARM architecture are, have this naming ARM V and then something where something is the revision number. So ARM V7 was the predominant 32 bit version, which we call ARCH. 32 uh, and it was used in Android phones till around 2015 and in iPhones till, uh, it was around 2013. Then ARM V8 is the mainstream 64-bit version we call that ARCH64 and it can optionally have a 32-bit mode ARCH32 for compatibility and the latest iteration uh, which for example the Cortex X4 uh, is based on is the is a 64-bit only ARM V9 and again it's still using the same ARCH64 uh, instruction set. There are lots of other things that ARM V9 brings to the table. And again, I've got a whole video here on this channel talking about ARM V9. So of course, the ARM instruction set is basically everywhere. Processors using the ARM uh, ISA are prevalent and are everywhere just about ubiquitous except for in desktops and laptops. That's why this thing now with Apple and with Qualcomm is so important. So Cortex-M and Cortex-A Pros are popular in IoT, Maker, Hobbyist and the Embedded Market. So Raspberry Pi uses a, a Cortex-A processor. Lots of the Raspberry Pico, Arduinos use Cortex-M processors. So it's very, very popular. And 99% 
of all smartphones use processors based on the ARM instructions. So architect is either from, you know, like Qualcomm using the X4, the X3, whatever, or with uh, Apple's uh, homegrown custom design. Basically, if you pick up a smartphone, it's going to be running an ARM based uh, processor in there. And Neoverse processors are growing in popularity in the cloud uh, because, of course, uh, cost and power consumption is such a big issue now in the cloud. And so Google, Oracle, Microsoft and Amazon all offer ARC64 based cloud uh, servers. So you can basically get uh, an, a uh, an ARM based processor everywhere down from the tiniest microcontroller that costs just a few dollars right up to servers in the cloud. Now desktops and laptops of course are the final frontier and Apple has been making inroads into this space with its ARM silicon over the last few years and now we have this new competitor which is Qualcomm. Now, the other thing to remember about the M3 and the Snapdragon X Elite is that they are systems on a chip. They are not just a CPU. So maybe if you buy an x86 uh, processor of some kind, you're getting basically just a, a CPU. But now these things have a GPU, for example, and the M series uses Apple's uh, own design GPU with its heritage coming from Imagination Technologies. And this latest iteration includes mesh shaders and hardware accelerated uh, ray tracing. Again, see my previous vi videos about those things. And the Snapdragon X Elite uses Qualcomm's Adreno GPU, which supports DirectX 12. So here we can see that these GPUs are, they are modern and current in terms of what we need in the PC market. Ray tracing on the one hand, uh, support for you know Windows DirectX 12 on the other side. And both socks have other things like hardware accelerated media, encode and decode, depending exactly on which chip we're talking about, but things like H.264, H.265, VP9, uh, AV1, and so on. And of course, both have NPUs, and this, of course, is something that's becoming very important, the ability to be able to run uh, these uh, neural processing units, generative AI, uh, and other kind of stuff, on the SOC. So these chips are more than just a CPU. You've got GPU, you've got uh, ed encoders and decoders, you've got NPUs all built into this same chip. And when we're talking about software, OS support for the ARM architecture, of course, is broad. ARC64 chips, depending on the maker, can run Windows, Mac OS, Linux, iOS, iPad OS, Android, FreeBSD, RiskOS, and so on. So basically, the software is there. It, should, it, it isn't an issue. The software support is absolutely uh, there across just about every uh, version from server operating system from smartphone operating systems from you know windows and mac os commercial desktop operating systems open source operators it's all there now as a rule of thumb you can basically work out that apple's processors run apple's os's so that's mac os and ipad os as i said there are some ipads that are with the m series processors in them and the snapdragon x elite will run windows Windows on Snapdragon or more generically Windows on ARM. At the moment, Windows on Snapdragon because Qualcomm is the only company that has uh, a Windows uh, version. Uh, there is an exclusivity license, we understand, and that will be ending at some point in the future. But at the moment, it's Windows on Snapdragon. But anyway, the point is, is that the Snapdragon will run Windows and Apple's processors run Apple's operating systems. Now, can they run Linux? This is a question I'm getting a lot in the comments. So from a technical point of view, of course, Linux has support for ARCH32 and ARCH64 for years now, for, for decades. That's not a problem. Now, Apple's computers with the M series processors can unofficially run Linux via the uh, Asher uh, Linux distro. In fact, I've got a video about how Linus Torvilds is now using that here on this channel. But note it is unofficially. So Apple haven't helped. Apple haven't funded it. Apple aren't involved. However, Apple have left the door kind of open that it is a possibility. All the stuff they've done is reverse engineering, trying to work out how the hardware works, trying to write the right drivers, trying to get hardware acceleration for things. Big effort from the community, but not something officially supported by Apple. And Qualcomm laptops are historically locked into running Windows. So I've got the Surface X Pro here, for example. I've also done a review of the Windows dev box. You can't just suddenly stick in a thumb drive and boot up uh, into Linux. It's locked onto 
uh, uh, running windows. Now, a community could appear like the one for uh, for the Apple and try to start getting Linux running on these particular things. I wouldn't expect that to happen straight away. But interestingly, Qualcomm did let slip at their uh, Snapdragon Summit that they've done some testing of the Snapdragon XLE on Linux. So technically, as I said, course possible, but with things like you know, secure boot and locked bootloaders, it's going to be hard to get that, that running. If you buy a Snapdragon X Elite laptop, which some people have said they'll do if they can get Linux running on it, just assume that it will only run Windows. Okay, that's your safest bet. Don't buy it thinking you're going to switch it to Linux because the chances of that happening are pretty slim. So what are the laptops and desktops available at the moment? Well, Apple has a large range of Macs with its Apple Silicon, including iMacs, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, Mac Mini, Mac Studio, and Mac Pro, and they all run various iterations of the M processors. Okay, and so that's a well-established range of products with a well-established uh, form factors, laptops, uh, you know, Mac Pro desktops and so on. Now, we don't actually have anything yet for the Snapdragon X Elite. It was only just announced. And the idea is that we're going to start seeing devices in the middle of 2024, another six months away from now. And of course, over time, we would assume that certainly the laptops may be a kind of mini PC. We're going to see machines uh, based on those. So we'll have to wait and see how that comes. So in terms of maturity, Apple are of course way in the lead in terms of their product line. Uh, Snapdragon is the new uh, new kid on the block uh, and this is the beginning of this uh, competition now for ARM based process in every kind of part of the desktop and laptop market. Okay so there you have it. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think this is a new era of ARM instruction set based processors for laptops, for desktops, for consumers in general. Do tell me what you think. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos and you're looking forward to that performance comparison video, for example, then why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.